read the Muskegon Chronicle daily newspaper, okay? Did you read a weekly newspaper or a daily newspaper? Um, I read a daily newspaper, but it was the, uh, I believe it was the Scotland or Ludington. Don't quote me on it. It was one, one or the other. It's really tiny. I mean, Muskegon would have been considered a big town, big news. Wow. Wow. Yeah. All righty then. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Okay. Well, I worked for a weekly in a small town in Ohio County for years, uh, the Ohio County Times News, but there's, it was about two men starting different papers, and I worked for the Ohio County Messenger that finally got bought out by this little town, Hartford, but Beaver Dam is where I wrote for years. So I get the small papers and the small, and we had a lot of, you know, people that were Amish or Mennonite around us in in Kentucky. So I sort of get that, but I didn't realize how, I, I don't want to say backwards because they make fun of everybody from Kentucky. I wasn't even from there, but I got to see how cruel Hollywood treated people. Even recently in the last day, I saw how they were making fun in a television show about saying he, he had a, he was given a role to be from Kentucky before they killed him. And he was like, Kentucky, and the girl says, yeah, I guess you can tell him you lost your accent going to college, making fun of the guy because he's going to be from Kentucky. Yeah. So how sad yeah. it is that people that are Amish children, and, and I, don't, I don't mean this disrespectful, folks, but we're talking education or lack of it here. So you had a very – you were just – you were hungry for education. You wanted to know yeah. more. Something inside you, your spirit really knew something more than this and being a woman and a child to leave that and oh my gosh all right so you're you're a strong strong soul strong strong spirit that's just all i've got to say that i mean i don't know how i don't know how else to say it all right so let's get on with your story so so you think you were reading the leddington l e d d i n g how do you spell that Ludington is L U D I N G T O N, and Scottville is straight east from Ludington, the, the first town straight east, although there might be a little town in between. <laughs> you know, this is. Uh, uh, and, well, and that's where the Amish were. You made me at the worry. These people don't even know where they're at. I mean, and 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 and, and mm -hmm. I guess like you, said, maybe people don't care. Maybe you grow up as a child. Okay, I'm on the planet. I know where the grass is. I know my parents feed me, and I can read the Bible, and I can work hard, and I can go to school and learn all I need to know. Is that sort of the way it is? Well, well, um, the way it is is that you're born and raised Amish, and your obligation is to remain in the Amish church to become a baptized member and to remain a baptized member for the rest of your life and to have children and uh, raise them and make sure that they remain inside the church. And uh, it's of no importance what, what surrounds you in terms of the, of the world outside, the world outside the Amish. This is why as an Amish child, you don't have any geographical bearings um, unless you uh, take make a point of learning it yourself. So I was very interested in maps and and directions and things like that. And one one example is that that my paternal grandparents lived in Wisconsin. I also had lived in Wisconsin from around age three to ten before we moved to Michigan. So I was in terms of geography, I had a, a, a keen interest in it. And although, like, I, I'm confused talking to you about exactly where Ludington is in Scottville, I mean, it's not because I, <laughs> I didn't have an awareness of geography. I did. Um, but I didn't have, I mean, way more than the average child. And so I knew, for example, that uh, there was a, a Greyhound bus station in Holland, that that was the closest bus station. I understood that. Holland. Reason, I understood. Yeah, Holland, Michigan, two oh and a half God. hours south. That's well, I love how Holland. I knew. Yeah. When we started well, talking Ludington, about like, uh -huh. Ludington or Ludington, depending on how you want to say it, but I guess if you grew up around there, you know it's Ludington. That is the state population. Well, if they got a county seat called Mason County, 
And it's a harbor town on Lake Michigan. So you must have lived close to there to go to Lake Michigan, right? To go see things. Yes. And yeah. All right, but it's right on Lake Michigan. But mm-hmm. oh my God. But they have eight thousand and Beaver Dam had about five thousand. So I can sort of see that Ludington wasn't that big really either. Yeah, eight thousand's not a lot of people, but considered a medium size maybe. I don't even know, but we're gonna have to look that up. So you were in some little county place in Mason County. Would that be correct? Yes. yes. Yes, and Scottville was our address. And Scottville, the population of Scottville today is 1,000, 1,200. And back then, it may have been less, you know, or not much more. I mean, these little towns don't really grow that much. They sort of, you know, stay the same, more or less. And you have to be born there and not leave there, which I've seen a lot of people in Kentucky that way. So it's Scottsville or Scotts, Scottsville, Scottville, Michigan. No, no, S C O T T V L L E. All right. Well, all right. Well, we didn't have that last time. So Scottville, Michigan, folks, and uh, 1,214 at the 2010 census. So very interesting that they've got Amish there. And so how many clans or groups or churches in that area were you familiar with? Did y'all all get together at some time in Ludington or Holland or have a big, you know, family reunion? Well, well, uh, in terms of, of the Scotland uh, community and in, in my, uh, to my knowledge, the uh, Amish community that was there when I lived there has disintegrated. No one, um, it completely broke up. And that's another long story, but, um, you know, the, the short part of it is there was a lot of disputes within the church about rules. Some people wanted a more uh, modern technology or change the rules that were considered too modern for uh, other com- other members of the church. They wanted to... Uh, they just had a big, big um, argument amongst the members about new rules or, or whatnot. And what is typical within the Amish, um, when there's a disagreement about adopting new rules, the ones um, who uh, want the new rules will move away. If they can't get it passed, um, they will move away to community that has those rules that they like. And if there's a community that has the rules that they like, they'll start a new community. And, and whoever starts the community, that that male is the boss who makes the rules. So back to Janet's question from in the beginning, that's how the rules are made and determined is through dispute. Well, let me tell you about and, in the beginning, the rules of your little town, which is, apparently mm-hmm. it's very small. It's only like 10 miles southwest of the village of Fountain, five miles west of the village of Custer, city of Ludington. And it says that the city of Scottville is approximately 10 miles east of the city of Ludington. Now, that's if we want to believe what's in Wikipedia. But get this, folks. It's 92%, almost 93, 92.9 white, okay, demographics, Mm 0.9 African American, Mm 0.5 Native American, and 2% Asian. So, yeah, so talk about, and we're going to talk about the rest of the world and how we're doing with the browning of America and, uh, you know, what's going on in China and North Korea and all that. But you were, what's so funny is you're American and so am I. So, folks, uh, let's look at this. We're all supposed to be basically majority Let's just, I mean, let's just go open-minded, okay? Three women here, one in Hawaii, one in Florida, and one in New York City. And we're, all, we're three women, and we could tell you that we're all three white and white women, but we have a voice now, thanks to Blog Talk Radio right now. But still, you, we're three women. We have that in common. We're three white women. And then... Uh, after that, we're Americans, and out of the three of us, even though Janet and I were out here, we may not have the academic schedule that you do. So let's go back to education. 
so far, that's all we have in common. Now, do you have a family and children? I had been lost several husbands. I've had four children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, but I've never had more emotional upset than trying to be back with family after 20 years of only being with my husband and my kids only coming to see me occasionally. But do you have family now or no? Uh, I don't have um, a blood family. I have my family are the friends I've I've chosen. I, I've had to create my family outside the Amish because once I escaped, I was ostracized, shunned uh, by my parents. Not, neither my mother nor my father would ever lift a finger to do anything that would help me. Um, in fact, I I, I, I believe. They, that they 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 have some sort of sinister um, pleasure in the fact that I was raped because they feel that God was punishing me. Well, that's what you get for for having escaped, left the church, disobeyed your parents. Um, they they to this day have never reached out and and acknowledge you know express anything um, in terms of compassion or, uh, for having you know, the fact that I was raped. So that was sort of like my last attempt at trying to establish um, a, a good relationship or somewhat amicable relationship with my parents. After that, I learned that it was just a one-way street. So from that point onward, that's when I really was able to just let go of of that longing for parents, that um, you know, questioning why, why, you know, why don't my parents love me, um, and and that need sort of to have biological parents who accepted me. Like I realized that was just never going to happen for whatever reason, and that I would need to form my own family, um, choose those who are my family, and and I've been fortunate to have found what I call my tribe, but it didn't happen until many years later, you know, until um, close to 20 years after my escape. So this has been a very recent development, comparatively speaking. Wow. Okay. Janet, any questions or you want her to go on with leaving the Amish in this little town that she's got in common where women, our families well, I come and to, go? Yeah, I wanted to comment on you know, you were making a analysis of the three women, <laughs> and you are the one that had lots of children, uh, and you have, I don't know if you've counted how many grandchildren, and do you have great-grandchildren? I have 12, now? four <laughs> daughters, four daughters, and each four had daughters. roughly four kids, and then they've all got kids that they've been spitting out the last few years. <laughs> so uh, all my great grandchildren are between zero, and when I have them on the way, till four years old. So I should be able to see, let's see, children, great children, three. I'm only going to be I'm fourth generation. So to get five generations alive at any family is a big deal. If you see five levels, but I had my kids at 15, right. 16, 18, and 21. So I was a right. very young mother. So, wow. so but other than that, yeah, women are. Do you know how many great I can't count them. I have no oh. clue. I, you know, Facebook. <laughs> Go Facebook them. It's like we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know well, how many great grandchildren I have. We have. Oh, that's amazing. No. Well, I, I, was, yeah. uh, I don't have children. So here's another uh, thing to look at. So I am white, Anglo Saxon, Protestant. I do not really resonate with my faith of uh, childhood. I'm, I'm an alternative researcher. I've gone pre-biblical back to uh, pre-Sumerian to the Anunnaki, and I have an alternative theory of existence uh, outside of the biblical construct. So that offends people. Um, and I have no children. I, I wanted to have children, was not able to have children. And when I was 39, I left my family because it was so dysfunctional, and I moved from Pennsylvania all the way over to Hawaii to find myself because I was uh, very sick, 
went to the pulmonary specialist, and the, and the doctor said, you don't have 